Hey there and welcome to Info World. Today's video is about the 10 most strangest trees that you haven't seen in your entire life. Without wasting any time let's get started. Top of the list is Rainbow Eucalyptus. Eucalyptus deglupta is a species of tall tree, commonly known as the Rainbow Eucalyptus, Mindanao gum, or rainbow gum that is native to the Philippines, Indonesia, and Papua New Guinea. It is the only eucalyptus species that usually lives in rainforest, with a natural range that extends into the northern hemisphere. It is characterized by multicolored bark. The Eucalyptus deglupta is a fast-growing tree that typically reaches a height of 60 to 75 meters with the trunk up to 240 centimeters in diameter and with buttresses up to 4 meters high. It has smooth, orange-tinted bark that sheds in strips, revealing streaks of pale green, red, orange, gray, and purplish-brown. The flower buds are arranged in a branching inflorescence in leaf axils, or on the end of branchlets, each branch with groups of seven buds. This tree is grown widely around the world in tree plantations, mainly for pulpwood used in making white paper. The rainbow eucalyptus grows in lowland and lower montane rainforest from sea level to altitudes of up to 1, 800 meters. On number 2 is bottle tree. Pacopodium lilii, the bottle tree, is a species of plant included in the genus Pacopodium. The scientific name derives from the 19th century Portuguese geologist Fernando da Costa Lille, who described the bottle tree during an exploration in southern Angola. This species can be either a shrub or a tree up to 6 meters tall and is characterized by the thick bottle-shaped trunk, which is almost branchless until the top. The branches are few and covered by slender thorns up to 30 centimeters long. Leaves are oblong and are covered with short hairs on both surfaces. The white flowers, characteristic of the family Apocynaceae, cluster around the tips of the branches. The plant produces a watery latex, rich in toxic alkaloids, used by local populations as arrow poison for hunting. In contact with the eyes this latex can produce blindness. Altitudinal range of this species is 1 on 106 dizrometers above sea level. The extreme temperatures range from an occasional 1-0 deg C to as much to 45 degrees Celsius. Coming up next is Crooked Forest of Gryfino. The Crooked Forest is a grove of oddly shaped pine trees located in the village of Nozarnowo near the town of Gryfino, West Pomerania, in northwestern Poland. This grove of 400 pines was planted in around 1930. Each pine tree bends sharply to the north, just above ground level, then curves back upright after a sideways excursion of 1 to 3 meter. It is generally believed that some form of human tool or technique was used to make the trees grow or bend this way, but the method has never been determined and remains a mystery to this day. It has been speculated that the trees may have been deformed to create naturally curved timber for use in furniture or boat building. Others surmise that a snowstorm could have bent the trunks, but there is little evidence of that. Coming up is the Baobab Prison Tree. The Baobab Prison Tree, Derby is a 1,500-year-old, large hollow Adansonia gregorii tree 6 kilometers south of Derby, Western Australia with a girth of 14.7 meters. It had been reputed to have been used in the 1890s as a lockup for indigenous Australian prisoners on their way to Derby for sentencing, but there is no evidence that it was ever used to house prisoners. In the English languages of the Western Kimberley, Boab trees are called Lagadi and have considerable mythological significance. Anthropologist Herbert Basto was one of the first Europeans to document the Derby Boab tree. He found bleached human bones lying on the floor, which suggests that Aboriginal people had also used the tree as an ossuary for the dead. The human remains seen at the tree by Basto and other early non-indigenous visitors have disappeared and may have been stolen. Kristen Harmon and Elizabeth Grant trace the prison tree myth back to 1948. Around that time, an Australian artist called Vlaze Zanales spent eight months camping in and around Derby. Zanales became intrigued by the region's extraordinary boab trees. When one of his resulting artworks titled The Boab Tree was later exhibited at Sydney, the Albany advertiser described the tree as having in its earlier days had its trunk used as a prison of a temporary nature until it was possible to transfer the prisoners to a more permanent abode. Harmon and Grant concluded that the history of another boab tree was transposed to the derby tree. Over time, this myth was repeated and became accepted as a fact, despite not being supported by the available historical evidence. Kim Ackerman also refuted the notion, on the grounds that Aboriginal histories do not support the story that this tree was used to imprison Aboriginal people. On number 5 is Silk Cotton Tree. Shrouded in dense jungle the temple of Ta Prome is ethereal in aspect and conjures up a romantic aura. Fig, banyan and kapuk trees spread their gigantic roots over stones, probing walls and terraces apart, as their branches and leaves intertwine to form a roof over the structures. Up is Dragon's Blood Tree. Dracina cinnabari, the Socotra Dragon Tree or Dragon Blood Tree, is a dragon tree native to the Socotra Archipelago, 
part of Yemen, located in the Arabian Sea. It is named after the blood-like color of the red sap that the trees produce. The dragon blood tree has a unique and strange appearance, with an upturned, densely packed crown having the shape of an uprightly held umbrella. This evergreen species is named after its dark red resin, which is known as dragon's blood. Unlike most monocot plants, Dracaena displays secondary growth, D. cinnabari even has growth zones resembling tree rings found in Dicot tree species. Its leaves are found only at the end of its youngest branches, its leaves are all shed every three or four years before new leaves simultaneously mature. Its fruits are small fleshy berries containing between one and four seeds. As they develop they turn from green to black, and then become orange when ripe. The berries are eaten by birds and thereby dispersed. The seeds are four, five millimeters in diameter, and weigh on average 68 milligrams. The berries exude a deep red resin, known as dragon's blood. The trunk and the branches of the dragon blood are thick and stout and display dichotomous branching, where each of the branches repeatedly divides into two sections. Coming up is Sunland Boab tree. Adinsonia is a genus made up of eight species of medium to large deciduous trees known as baobabs. They are placed in the Malvaceae family, subfamily Bombacoidae. They are native to Madagascar, mainland Africa. The trees have also been introduced to other regions such as Asia. The generic name honors Mitchell Adanson. The baobab is also known as the upside-down tree, a name that originates from several myths. They are among the most long-lived of vascular plants and have large flowers that are reproductive for a maximum of 15 hours. The flowers open around dusk, opening so quickly that movement can be detected by the naked eye, and are faded by the next morning. The fruits are large, oval to round and berry-like and hold kidney-shaped seeds in a dry, pulpy matrix. The trunk is made of fibrous wood arranged in concentric rings, although rings are not always formed annually and so cannot be used to determine the age of individual trees. Tree diameter fluctuates with rainfall so it is thought that water may be stored in the trunk. Baobab trees have two types of shoots, long, green vegetative ones, and stout, woody reproductive ones. Edinsonia rubristipa is the only baobab that sometimes has spines. Edinsonia gregoriae is generally the smallest of the baobabs, rarely getting to over 10 meters tall and often with multiple trunks. Up next is the wawana tree. The wawana tree, also known as the wawana tunnel tree, was a famous giant sequoia that stood in Mariposa Grove, Yosemite National Park, California, USA, until February 1969. It had a height of 227 feet and was 26 feet in diameter at the base. The origin of the word Wawana is not known. The a popular story claims Wawana was the Miwok word for big tree or for hoot of the owl. Birds are considered the sequoia tree's spiritual guardian. A tunnel was cut through the tree in 1881, enlarging an existing fire scar. Two men, the Scribner brothers, were paid $75 for the job which can now be equivalent to $2,106. The tree had a slight lean, which increased when the tunnel was completed. A number of big trees in California had tunnels dug through them in the late 1800s and early 1900s. The tunnel allowed tourists to drive, bike, or walk through the tree. The tunneling inflicted severe damage to the health and strength of the trees. The tunnels were cut to stimulate automobile tourism. Because of the damaging effects of carving through trees, the practice of creating tunnel trees has long passed. On number 9 is Tree of Life. The Tree of Life in Bahrain is a 9.75 meters high Prosopis cineraria tree that is over 400 years old. It is on a hill in a barren area of the Arabian Desert, 2 kilometers from Jebel Dukhan, the highest point in Bahrain, and 40 kilometers from Manama. The tree is abundantly covered in green leaves. Due to its age and the fact that it is the only major tree growing in the area, the tree is a local tourist attraction and is visited by approximately 65,000 people every year. The yellow resin is used to make candles, aromatics and gum, the beans are processed into meal, jam, and wine. It is not certain how the tree survives. Bahrain has little to no rain throughout the year. Its roots are 50 meters deep, which may be enough to reach the water. Others say the tree has learned to extract moisture from grains of sand. Some claim that the tree is standing in what was once the Garden of Eden, and so has a more mystical source of water. In 2009, the tree was nominated to the new Seven Wonders of Nature list, but it did not finish on the list. In October 2010, archaeologists unearthed 500-year-old pottery and other artifacts in the vicinity of the tree. A soil and dendrochronology analysis conducted in the 1990s concluded that the tree was an acacia planted in 1582. Last on the list is Wolimi pine tree. Wolimia is a genus of coniferous trees in the family Araucariaceae. It was known only through fossil records until 1994, when the Australian species Wolimia nobilis was discovered in a temperate rainforest wilderness area of the Wolimi National Park in New South Wales. It was growing in a remote series of narrow, steep-sided, sandstone gorges 150 kilometers northwest of Sydney. The genus is named after the National Park. 
In both botanical and popular literature, the tree has been almost universally referred to as the Wolomi pine although it is not a true pine, nor a member of the pine family, but is related to Agathis and Ericaria. The Wolomi pine is classified as critically endangered on the IUCN's red list and is legally protected in Australia, reaching 25, 40 meters tall. The bark is very distinctive, dark brown, and knobbly, the tree coppices readily, and most specimens are multiple trunked or appear as clumps of trunks thought to derive from old coppice growth, with some consisting of up to 100 stems of differing sizes. The leaves are flat linear, 3, 8 cm long and 2, 5 mm broad. They are arranged spirally on the shoot but twisted at the base to appear in two or four flattened ranks. As the leaves mature, they develop from bright lime green to a more yellowish green. The seed cones are green, 6, 12 cm long and 5, 10 cm in diameter, and mature about 18, 20 months after wind pollination. They disintegrate at maturity to release the seeds which are small and brown, thin and papery with a wing around the edge to aid wind dispersal. The discovery, on or about the 10th of September 1994, by David Noble, Michael Castelline, and Tony Zimmerman only occurred because the group had been systematically exploring the area looking for new canyons. Noble had good botanical knowledge and quickly recognized the trees as unusual because of the unique bark and worthy of further investigation. That's all for today. See you in another video.